Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite natural dye processes called bundle dyeing. Unlike immersion dyeing where you take a pre-treated piece of fiber and place it into a dye bath, with bundle dyeing you take a pre-treated piece of fiber and you directly apply the dye onto the fiber before rolling it, bundling it, and steaming it to extract the dye from the plants and to attach them to your fibers. bundle dyeing because it allows the dyer to tap into their creativity. It's intuitive and fun and you never really know how your bundle is going to turn out until you're unrolling it. It feels like opening a present every single time. The method that I'm going to be showing you today is a really simple beginner's method. It's a great way to dip your toes into the world of bundle dyeing if you've never done it before and it's a really fun activity to do with kids as long as the adults are handling the pretreatment of the fabric and the heating part of the bundle dye process. Another really great thing about bundle dyeing is the amount of different kinds of dyes you can use for your bundle dyes. So today I'm going to be showing you a couple bundle dyes that I'm going to make using food scraps from my kitchen and spices from my kitchen, as well as some different dye extracts that I have and flowers that I picked on a walk yesterday. Here's what I'll be using for our bundle dye today. start I have some pre-treated mordanted cotton that has been wetted out so I soaked it in water and then I gave it a spin in my washing machine so it's damp but there's no excess water left in the fabric and that's really the ideal dampness for bundle dyeing. So I'm going to just be laying my fiber flat in front of me on my table And you can really see the difference between the mordanted piece of fiber that's had a tannin soak and the white untreated piece of fiber that's laying on my table. And an option for bundle dyeing is to use a much lighter tannin soak when you're mordanting. So you could do a 5% weighted fiber tannin soak instead of a 10, which I used for this fiber and that would give you a much lighter color if you wanted your background to be a wider background. So today I'm going to be making two bundle dyes. I'm gonna use one just using food waste from my kitchen and a spice from my kitchen. So this first one I'm going to make using some red onion skins, some yellow onion skins, and some turmeric powder. just how beautiful a few simple ingredients can make a bundle dye. Okay, so now time for yellow onion skins. And you can even grind your plant material up in a blender beforehand to make the pieces as small as you would like, or you can leave them as big as you would like too for some texture. Alright, so now I have my yellow and purple onion skins distributed onto my fiber and I'm going to start sprinkling some turmeric around. But before doing so, I just wanted to say that I recommend starting very light with turmeric because a little bit can go a long way and if a big clump falls onto your fiber, it's really difficult to get it off without smearing it in and making a big yellow spot. So now all of our dye stuff is onto our fabric and it's time for us to roll it up.
was complete and now we're gonna roll it again and kind of make it look like a snail or a cinnamon bun. I like to roll mine actually with the edge in so I can keep it nice and tight. Okay, so here I have some cotton string that I just cut into pieces and you just want to cut it long enough to where it's going to be able to wrap all the way around your bundle and you're just going to tie a knot to keep it taut and bundled. This is the bundling part of bundle dye and so I like to tie a simple, simple surgeon's knot. Which And then if you have excess and it can go around it again, then I just flip mine over and bundle it the other way also. So it looks like this string is gonna wrap around my bundle three times. And here's your bundle. Okay, so our first bundle is steaming and I'm gonna let that steam for about an hour. So this one is gonna be a little different. I'm not gonna just use food waste on this one. I'm gonna use some dye extracts that I've actually used before, so I'm reusing these. So this is some logwood that I've already extracted dye from, but I find that bundle dyeing is a really great method for reusing and recycling dye stuff. So I just went ahead and strained this out of the dye and dried it and saved it for a bundle dye. I'm gonna be using some of my homegrown Black Knight Scabiosa flowers, some of my homegrown Cosmos, some rose petals, some hibiscus flowers, they're dried, and some flowers that I picked on my walk yesterday. This is some bitterweed and some coreopsis. All right, so for this second bundle, I'm going to be doing a different method where I'm going to only apply dye material on half of the fiber, and then I'm gonna fold it over and get this neat mirrored effect on the fiber. So this actually makes it a little bit easier to roll, and it just gives you a different look than applying the dye all over the fiber, and this way you'll be able to see what both effects look like. Okay, so now I'm just going to Fold my fiber in half so I can see where the halfway mark is and get it a good crease with my finger. Okay, so now I know where my halfway mark is and I'll open it back up and I should still be able to see that halfway mark. Yep. And now I'm gonna start applying my dye stuff. satisfied with the placement of my dye plants on my fiber. I'm just going to go through and make sure I didn't leave any empty spots. So I see a few that are just a little bit more empty than others. So I'll choose a couple of flowers and just fill those in. Even though some empty space is kind of nice sometimes too. And you want to make sure that you get your dye all the way up to the fold line. Okay, and now I'm gonna fold it and then I'm gonna roll it up just the way that we rolled the last bundle die. Kind of 
press it down with my hands, just like so. All right, so now we're ready to roll it up just the same way we rolled up the last one. My bundle is complete and it's ready to go straight into the steamer. I'll also steam this one for an hour and I will be back to show you all the results. Okay, so my bundle steamed for two hours and I took them out and let them cool a bit so I could handle them. And now we're going to open them. So here first is the bundle that we just made with turmeric and onion skins. just have been thrown away otherwise in one spice. Okay, let's unwrap the other one. Alrighty, so now I've shaken off all my excess plant material, thrown it in the compost, and I'm going to give these a wash with some pH neutral detergent. And you will see some color shifting after the first wash, and they will be a little bit more muted afterwards, so they're not gonna stay quite as vibrant as they are right now. And a note about the onion skin. So you'll see here that the green on this fiber, that's actually from the red onion skins. And the yellow is from the yellow, and then you see the little orange is from the turmeric. So, onion skins make beautiful color at first, but they're known to be a more fugitive dye, so they do shift and fade with time and wash and wear. Um, the green from the purple onion skins is going to fade into more of a tan color eventually. However, the yellow from the yellow onion skin stays pretty yellow and true to its color for a while. I have a lot of clothes that I dyed for my son using onion skins that have been washed hundreds of times and they still look really, really yellow and saturated and beautiful. But you will notice that the green from the purple onion skins will shift a bit. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know below.